Yo, what is up you guys and welcome to another video. My name is Benji and this is week number 30 of investing with Robinhood app. If you guys do happen to be new here, welcome. This is my actual dividend stock portfolio that's currently valued at just under $81,000. The numbers will move around because we are still in market trading hours. My portfolio is made up of around 65 different companies that all have a few things in common. All these different companies do pay out dividends to me uh, for owning shares of them every single quarter or every single month, depending on the dividend payout frequency, as well as all of these companies in my opinion, do have the opportunity to go up in price over time. So if I am looking to ever sell any of these stocks in the future, I would hopefully get a nice little profit off that. I'm currently 27 years old and I'm looking to use this portfolio as a long-term investment, uh, looking to hold on to all these stocks and just gather more and more shares of my top favorite stocks while getting paid out the dividends along the way for years and years to come. Uh, like I said, I'm only 27, so I'm looking to hold on to this portfolio for, uh, I would say, at least 10, 20, 30 years before I would hopefully need to sell any shares. And until then, just keep on stacking as many shares as I can and get paid out dividends along the way. In today's video, we're going to go over where the portfolio is currently sitting at. I want to show you guys all the new stocks that I did purchase over the last few days. I have still been purchasing quite a few, actually. I also want to talk about my opinion on if it is a good time to start investing as of right now. I want to give you guys some insight on what I think. We're also, of course, going to check out some dividends that have been paid out to me recently. Uh, we're also going to open up some free stocks. And then at the end, we're going to go over some viewer questions and comments. So for starters, the portfolio as of this moment is just under $80,800, down just around 1.2% as of today. Um, honestly, you guys, I thought that the market was really going to take a hit as of this Monday. Um, I just felt like there was something brewing. I felt like we were going to wake up to some really uh, dramatic uh, things going on in the market, but it really kind of leveled out. It's sort of just moving around a little bit. Some sectors are down, some sectors are up. But overall, I was luckily able to grab a few more deals as of today, which we're gonna go over here in a second. If we take a look at the last week now, we are down $2,670, down 3.2% over the last week. Looking at the last month, we're up $5,100, just over 6.7%. And then over the last three months, we are still down $15,800, some change. And then for the last year, I opened up this portfolio, you guys, just over um, you know, 30 weeks ago around that area. That's when I started investing. So just over half a year so far we've been at this and we're so far down uh, just under $15,000, 15.3%. All right, you guys, now let's take a quick look at what I've been purchasing over the last few days. I'll start with as of today. So we grabbed two more shares of American Express at 86.20 per share. We also grabbed one more share of Wells Fargo at $27. We grabbed one more share of National Retail Properties at $29.72. And I will say, guys, the market has been pretty low as of recently. Again, we're approaching the March numbers in certain companies again. So I am really trying to take advantage because as the market was going back up over the last month, um, I kept telling myself that I wish I would have bought more shares of some of my favorite companies. So I'm really trying to not miss out on any sort of deals as of this time around. And then I bought one more share of Verizon at 56.10 for one share. Verizon is definitely one of my favorite stocks and it has been going down as of the last few days and I am going to keep on loading up on more and more shares. I just bought one just to kind of feel it out, but I will be getting more shares of Verizon here soon. I was also lucky enough to grab two more shares of Caterpillar at 106.65 per share. Then I grabbed one more share of Coca-Cola at 44.82. Another two shares of Verizon at 56.31. One more share at t at 29.41. And two more shares of Realty Income at 50.68. And then back on Friday, I also grabbed three more shares at t at 29.81. I also grabbed one share of British American Tobacco at 37.35. Five more shares of Wells Fargo at 27.44. And then my newest swing trade of the week is Brookfield Property Read. This is a stock that I actually hold some shares of already, but I figured um, it's not really a stock that I really, really like that much and that I really, really want to hold on to for the long term, but I'm willing to if the price does go down, of course. So this is my swing trade of the week. Let's call it that. I got 18 shares of Brookfield Property REIT last Friday at $8.95. And currently, Brookfield Property REIT is at, as of this moment, 901. It did peak up at 922 earlier today. So again, my target for my swing trading per week, I'm really doing this for fun. I'm not trying to make any sort of crazy money. Some days, some weeks, I'll spend a lot more and get a lot more shares. Sometimes I'll probably get less. I'm just trying to kind of feel out the technique, if you guys will. So this one is actually up a little bit. I could sell out for a gain of, I don't know, maybe a few dollars as of right now. Um, but I'll probably hold on to it. I, my price target to sell those shares on this one is around $10. Then on Friday, I grabbed two more shares of Verizon at $57.19 per share. I grabbed one more share of Dominion Energy at $76.06 per share. I grabbed two shares of Main Street Capital for $25 flat each. 
I grabbed three more shares of Realty Income at 5196, another share of Altria at 3912. I was able to grab another UPS buy for two shares for 9227. More JP Morgan, three shares, 92.74 per share. And then finally, I grabbed three more shares of AT&T at 30.36 as of last Friday. So as you guys can see, I have been going on quite a shopping spree because I really am not trying to miss out on any sort of uh, low prices on some of these stocks uh, to get as many shares as I can before the prices do go up because I do believe in the long-term or near-term future that the prices will in fact go up on all these different stocks that I am buying more and more shares of. The next thing I want to touch on and give my opinion on is, is this a good time to start investing? Is this a good time to start buying dividend stocks? And the answer to this, the short answer to this is, there's not really a good time or a bad time in my opinion. Of course, there's times in the market where things are going on, headlines come out where the market might shift down, or maybe the company has a bad earnings report. There are going to be things that happen throughout the years that do affect the price of a company's stock, of course. But the way that I like to look at it if we look at all my buying history for AT&T, for example, back at February 28th, I bought three shares at 35.20. So right now, the price of AT&T is under $30, and I was still more than happy to buy more shares of AT&T at a significantly higher price than it's at right now. But if we keep looking at all my different buying history, you'll start to see a trend here, and it's really just time in the market versus time in the market. I wanted to get my foot in the market. I want to start buying some shares, and as you guys can see, I just buy a few here and there. And of course, this will depend on how much money you have available, how much money you have to spend. I know, I know that not everyone has tens of thousands of dollars to work with, but I want to just give you guys an overview of my strategy, and maybe you guys can apply this to yours, especially with platforms like Robinhood, M1 Finance. Lots of platforms allow you to buy fractional shares of all these different stocks these days, so you don't have to be buying three shares you could buy you know 0.5 of a share of AT&T over time uh, if you guys are following me along with that so if we look at all these different days that I came in to Robinhood and I looked at AT&T's price and I grabbed a few shares a few more shares a few more shares over time I was able to literally get my price at t pretty close to the all-time low price over the last 52 weeks at least pretty close and especially since I did start investing at the top of the market it was significantly harder to get my dollar cost average uh, price down and lower and lower because I did invest at such a uh, inflated prices in the market. But over time, I just bought a few shares here and there. This is what I've been doing for pretty much all the stocks in my entire portfolio, especially the ones that I really, really like and the ones that I want to hold on to for a long time. Um, and especially the ones that do pay out a good dividend, of course. So over time, there's not necessarily a good or bad time to invest, in my opinion, for a long-term investor. It's more that you just invest consistently. Um, and again, you don't have to be buying 10 shares at a time. You could just buy one share per week, maybe over the next two years or half a share per day over the next you know five months it whatever it might be for your specific strategy i just want to touch on that this is the way that i've been doing it and and so far so good because my average cost currently for at&t isn't all that bad again, again considering i did start investing at literally the top of the market and next i want to show you guys all the dividends that are currently pending in my portfolio we have an absolute monster of a monthly dividend coming soon from realty income 162 shares of realty income is now paying me $37.75 per month. So that's a lot of income just from one company I've invested in. Um, and I'm gonna keep putting more shares of realty income into this portfolio so we can just get that income higher and higher. And as we see, we do have a few other pretty big ones from EPR properties, national retail properties, and so on and so forth. I did also update my dividend tracker, a portion of it at least. I don't think it's as up to date as of today necessarily, but I'll show you guys this in a second. And as of the last few days, we did get a big payout from AT&T and Verizon. Um, Foot Locker all in one day. So that's again, one of my biggest payouts in one day. Um, so as you guys can see here, this dividend portfolio is chugging along and we came a long way. Um, I really do remember this, the first few dividends that I was paid out, it's just a dollar, uh, maybe even like 50 cents. And I was just as excited, honestly, as now because it just feels so cool to be getting paid out some money um, in the form of income for just investing into these high quality companies and holding them uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. A quick look at my dividend tracker. I need to update this again, you guys. I need to make sure that it's all updated. I think it's mostly updated. But as we see here from when we started dividend investing, these are all the dividends that are paid out on each day. So started off very, very slow for the first few months. And as we move on to just a few months into this, we're only 30 weeks into this um, you know, journey, this dividend portfolio, we are starting to see a whole lot of income coming in. Um, again, this is on days. So we've had days where we've had over $100 of dividends paid to us and the graph is just going to keep going up and up and up because i am just investing into more and more shares of more and more companies which all do pay dividends so 
the future should be bright, hopefully, as long as these companies don't cut or suspend their dividends, which it's most likely going to happen with some more companies. There has already been a few in my portfolio that has done it. And with the current economic situation going on, it's sort of going to happen regardless because companies need to conserve cash. And I understand that. But overall, we're pretty diverse. Hopefully we can keep the dividends coming in and hopefully we can keep bringing this graph, you know, higher and higher and higher as the days, weeks, months and years go on. All right, you guys, now we are going to open up a few free stocks that you guys were nice enough to use my link to get me. If you guys aren't already signed up for the Robinhood app, you guys can use the link in any one of my descriptions right here where it says sign up for the Robinhood app with my link and receive a free stock. And if you guys do use my link, I'll receive a free stock and so will you. And if you guys didn't see my last video, I actually pulled a free stock of Johnson & Johnson valued at around $150. So that was absolutely crazy. Those results are not typical, but it can happen. And I've even heard stories of people pulling more expensive stocks than that. So definitely use my link if you guys haven't signed up already. Wow, so we do have quite a few to open up today. So I guess you guys were really uh, inclined after seeing the Johnson & Johnson. So the first one is from Benjamin F. Thank you so much for using my link. Let's see what we got on this free one. All right, so we got our prospect capital valued at $4. The next one is from Anthony T. Thank you so much, Anthony, for using my link. Let's see what we got on this one. All right, one share at Cleveland Cliffs at $4.26. Pretty good. The next one is from Baron W. Thank you so much, Baron, for using my link. Let's see what we got on this one. Let's go on the right side this time. We got a free stock of WPX Energy valued at $5.54. So that's the most valuable one of today. Thank you so much, Baron, once again. The next one is from Michael H. Thank you, Michael, for using my link. Let's go on this side this time. Okay, Southwestern Energy, $2.80. Not too bad. The next one is from RMA. Thank you so much for using my link in my description to sign up for the app. Let's see what we got on this one. All right, up another prospect capital at just under $4. The next one is from Raymundo M. Thank you so much for using my link. And yet another prospect capital. And the next one is from Ronald C. Let's see what we got on this one. All right, not bad. Another WPX Energy valued at $5.54. And we got two more. Hopefully we can get a big one in here from Aaron S. Let's see what we got on this one right in the middle. And another prospect capital. And the last one from Josh S. Let's see what we got on this one. Please be a big one. Let's go. And yet another prospect capital valued at $3.99. Again, thank you guys all for signing up through my link in my description. And the best of luck to all of you guys in your investing. And before we go, you guys, I want to quickly answer some viewer questions and comments. If you guys do have any questions or comments, comment them down below. It could be about investing, business, literally anything. Just comment something down below. I really appreciate it. So the first one is from Rain Wilson. The lockdown season is a good time to invest in passive income as no one knows when the lockdown ends. I actually really like this comment and I totally agree. I think that we need to all gather as many sources of passive income as we possibly can. We only have so much time during the day and that's really why I've dived so deep into dividend investing because it's a great way to put your money to use for you, make a good yield off your money, and then hopefully long term, you know, make a serious profit off your money. And the next one is from Baja Fresh. Also, when you first started dividend investing, were you discouraged to see small dividend payments given out with the stock you own? For example, a couple of shares of about 10 stocks, each receiving about 30 cents a share. I'm aware of drip, but how did you motivate yourself to reach where you are now? Thank you. So for me personally, I did a lot of research and I followed the whole dividend investing model long before I actually did it myself. So honestly, when I first started buying some shares of some companies and I saw the first few dividends coming in, I actually wasn't uh, unmotivated. I was actually super motivated. I was super excited, even if it was just like 30 cents or a dollar or two dollars. I was super, super motivated. and I loved the idea. Again, I've said it a million times, but that you invest in high quality companies and you get paid out uh, income just for doing so. I mean, I already wanted to start investing into the stock market, but when I came across this version, this vehicle of investing, uh, where again, you get paid out dividends along the way. I was honestly hooked off the bat. So no, I wasn't unmotivated. I was super motivated from the start and that's just the way I looked at it. Next one is from Money B. How diverse is your portfolio? Do you pay attention to that or just let everything flow? When it comes to portfolio diversity, I do own a lot of different companies in a lot of different industries and sectors, etc. cetera. Um, I don't really pay too close of attention to try to really make it even or such because I still, in my opinion, am at the very early stages of building my long, long, long-term portfolio. Um, I want to allocate at least $200,000 of my money this year in this portfolio. Um, and we're almost halfway there as far as the allocation. So we're pretty much on track um, with my deposits, etc. So with where I'm at now, I don't think it's too important because my portfolio is far, far from finished. But I do definitely, uh, you know, keep in mind, uh, for example, like I really want to have some uh, exposure to healthcare and stuff like that. So I started looking for some healthcare companies or some, uh, you know, insurance companies that do pay dividends. And I came across a few, which actually happened to be a little bit overpriced at the time, in my opinion. But, but I definitely do keep it in mind. It's a good point. And I'll probably 
pay closer attention to that as uh, my deposit allocation, you know, gets bigger and bigger as time goes on. And the last one for today is from Chris Davis. Hi, Benji. My name is Chris. I watch your YouTube channel all the time about your stock portfolio and I'm enjoying them so much. But I have a question about starting a brand through Shopify. What would the best advice you would give me when starting a personal clothing brand? So I thought this was a cool question. This is a little bit off topic from what we normally talk about. If you guys don't already know, I do own a Shopify store. That's what I do for my main source of income. Uh, I've been running this business for around six years now, and that's basically my day-to-day -day operation. I run an online retail store, basically. So I do have quite a bit of experience with selling physical products online, et cetera. And my honest advice to you, Chris, would be the following, and feel free to ask more questions on you know uh, future videos as well as this video to give me more detail of what you're looking into. But some vague advice would be learn marketing. That's one of the hardest things to do when starting an online store. You really have to know how to market your products, learn how to do Facebook ads, learn how to do Instagram ads, Snapchat ads, learn email marketing, look into all these different ways to reach an audience. Um, in my opinion, that's the most important way to build a brand. Um, I've came across plenty of friends and colleagues in the past, uh, you know, a few years that have had ideas for awesome products, but it all comes back to the same thing. If you don't know how to get eyes on those products, if you don't know how to reach an audience, the right audience, uh, to show the product to the right people, it's going to be really tough to have the brands um, succeed in any sort of way. So although I'm sure your clothing brand is probably really cool and I'm sure that you have really unique style and whatever else it might be for a cool, you know, new hip clothing brand, um, I would say the most important part would be to learn marketing, learn digital marketing, learn paid advertising. That, that is going to be the most important thing for your brand's success. Well, that is going to do it for today, you guys. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by. Please, please like this video if you guys did like this video. Make sure to subscribe for more updates on this portfolio and everything that I have going on. I'm looking to keep buying aggressively over this next week as well as I'm looking to hopefully execute and close out of my previous swing trade that we uh, you know, implemented as of last week and start a new one as of this week. So make sure to stick around for that and everything else we have going on. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.